streaming faster, slower, how it's doing. So I thought I would just answer some questions, find out what burning questions you have, um, and see how this streams to Facebook Live. I don't know if this will spring good or bad. I'm trying to test the settings on my camera. So it may be good, it may be bad, we'll see how it goes. Um, there's a significant time delay on what I'm seeing. And uh, so I'm kind of curious what it looks like on the on the flip side. In fact, let me pull up my, I may just pull up my, you can see my cat walking by there. It, on my screen, it's running slow. So I'm just gonna see on Facebook Live here if it's showing up, um, doing anything interesting here. Uh, some of you may be signing in, some of you, if you have any questions, let me know. Hey Sue, how's it going? I can't tell on Facebook if it's streaming fast or slow or how it's doing. I'm just trying to check and see. Uh, hello, Paula in up north Michigan and Linda is here. How are you doing? Let me just pop your stuff up here. Um, I'm just trying to see on, on the screen here if it's gonna pull it up. Uh, I, may, I may not be able to see it on my phone. Yeah, there's a bit of a time delay, but it's kind of interesting. Okay, well, anyway, we'll, we'll play with it and see how it goes. Uh, it may upload better, it may not, we'll see. Um, let's see here. Hey, Paul, you're welcome. Hello from Indiana. Um, to this evening, I got home and took care of chores and I'm sitting down to do charts and re realized that I really didn't have a topic and I had tested some settings over the weekend, so I'm just gonna see how they run on the live stream. It may be that because the setting is too high, it may not flow real well. Hey, Rhonda, how are you? Um, it says she's, Paula says it's good in Florida, that's good, all right. How often should I take berberine supplement each day? Usually, if you're notably insulin resistant, um, Kimberly, I usually recommend taking berberine uh, twice a day uh, with probably your two largest meals. If that's either breakfast or lunch or lunch or dinner, whatever works well, that's usually what I recommend. Uh, scale moved this week. Yay, Linda, that's awesome. Hey, Tom, how are you? Wondering if early morning leg cramps due to sodium and magnesium. Are you, the question is, so if you're awake and out of bed, and the cramp occurs, it's usually sodium or potassium. If it's um, while you're asleep in bed or while you're laying in bed, it's usually magnesium or zinc. That's often the case. So be aware of that uh, with leg cramps. Masks for kids, are they necessary? Uh, remember the mask. And so this kind of mask that you're wearing, this is the, uh, the simple uh, three-layer mask that we use in my office for my staff uh, and my patients if we're out of the other masks that are available just as a general prophylactic mask. Um, no difference in that regard. You're not actually, you're actually trying to just protect from a droplet. Um, the, this is not an aerosolized uh, virus, the COVID-19 is not, um, but it is a droplet based. So if someone coughs or sneezes, they can actually project it for up to six to 10 feet. Um, but and that kind of mask actually protects a droplet that, that, that's somewhat dependent on the gravity um, after the vector of force starts to slow it down. So that's protecting you from inhaling a droplet, is what it is. So same mask, identical. Hello, Maria, good to see you. <clears throat> hey, Terry, how are you, Salt Lake? There in Salt Lake. Hello, Crystal. And there's Vicki from California. Uh, just wanted to thank you. Oh, you're very kind, Evan. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and the memes are the memes are not too obnoxious, huh? All right, good. Vicki, how are you? Let's see, what's your favorite treatment for high blood pressure besides diet and stress management? Well, Kim, the first thing I recommend for blood pressure treatments uh, generally is a diet. Uh, low carbohydrate diet. We know that if your insulin level is spikes, it's going to raise your blood pressure. Insulin stimulates your body to retain salt, and then salt causes the blood pressure to rise. So we, it's not, we don't want to avoid salt. We want to avoid things that raise insulin. So that's the first step. Um, exercise is the second step. So adequate adequate diet, uh, adequate exercise or rest, adequate exercise. So diet, exercise, rest, and then if that doesn't work, then depending on the person's age. Um, what their family history may be. I may, we, if I'm assuming you're talking about a medication or a treatment uh, regards to pharmacological, um, I'll usually start with um, one of the ACE inhibitors or ARBs uh, and or a water pill, depending on what, what the person's history is and if there's any other uh, comorbid conditions that are there. Hello, Dan, how are you? It's good to see you. Let's see, love the podcast. Oh, thank you, Cheryl, I appreciate it. You can see my cat, that's um, Shelby the cat. She's a Persian. She's walking by my shoulder there. What brand of berberine? Oh, Crystal, you just led right into that. That brand of berberine that I recommend is the brand that I actually use and, and designed. Uh, with, uh, it's a, You can go to ketoliving.com, and I don't have a bottle here. I thought I had a bottle. Yes, I don't. I must have moved my bottle of berberine. Um, it's the ketoliving.com. Uh, let me put that in here. It's keto 
Living.com. If you go there, uh, our Burberry, it's called Burberry Plus. It's the one you can check out. Um, leg cramps in bed, says Tom. So it's magnesium or zinc, Tom. Those would be the two I'd supplement. Hello, Linda. How are you? Let's see. Howdy from Wyoming. And do I think that the virus is in the air or in the air for a walk outdoors? No, I do not, Maria. And the fact that we know it's not, it doesn't just float around in the air. It has to be, it has to be, you have to pick it up from someone you get exposed to who either coughs or sneezes nearby you. Hello, Angela. It's good, uh, Angela, good to see you. And then you aware. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Jamie. Maybe I missed it. Oh, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Best advice on idiopathic urticaria. Um, Rhonda, idiopathic urticaria is going to be driven by an, an auto, either an autoimmunity or some form of, um, oftentimes there's, there's, there may be something in the diet, in the lifestyle, in the exposures, or I've seen some people with stress. There are a couple of medications that are out there effective. Uh, it really depends on what your allergies are and what, what's already been tried with you. Um, there are some patients that do well with some of the asthma medicines. There's one called Zolaire that we use. Uh, there's another one that's a, a cousin to that. Um, those are the ones that do work if you've tried and failed everything else. But talk with your doctor about those because those would be some options in that regard. Let's see. There's Kathy from Texas. And uh, let's see here. Black coffee raises your blood sugar levels. Oh, canned black coffee. Dan, I've never seen black coffee do it unless it's instant coffee. I have seen instant coffee raise blood sugar levels uh, and insulin levels. So if it's, but if it's regular brewed, I, I've never seen that one do it. Uh, and I've been checking people's testing for years. So the black coffee seems to be okay, but if it's instant coffee, it is not. Do I believe sugar feeds cancer? Kim, I don't believe it. I know it. Um, most cancer cells, 95% of cancer can only use sugar as their fuel. Um, and because of the changes that occur in the mitochondria, which actually make them cancer cells. So that is, that is what those molecules live off of. Um, it's not a belief. It's a, it's, it's been highly written about in the scientific literature. Hello, Tim, how are you? And then finally awake for a live. Yes, Patty, you stayed awake. Exciting. Um, let's see. Do I have a recommendation for restarting a ketogenic diet? after being years off. Just start, Tina. Um, the results are not the same for round two. The reason the results are not the same for round two is because you're partially keto adapted. And so you don't have the same response to cutting the carbs out that you did before um, because you you because you absorb fat more efficiently. So slathering everything in fat is usually the mistake that most people make the second time around. They just dive right into fat bombs and fat everything. My suggestion is eat real food, pick foods that are going to be uh, thirty percent protein, seventy percent fat, which is basically going to be red meat, eggs, a bacon, sausage. Um, if that's not working, then I would alternate a lower fat food like chicken, fish, or turkey with a uh, higher fat food. Just kind of alternate back and forth. That way, you're hitting somewhere between the fifty-five to seventy percent fat throughout the day. Um, if you if you have a steak and you slather it with butter, if you're putting butter on everything, if you're putting butter in your, butter in your coffee, you're going to have a problem. Um, that's usually where people fail. Second reason that they fail is that they're using sweeteners that they shouldn't be using. So check out the sweeteners. Go to my website, docmuscles.com. If you click on the freebie section, there's a you can get my free article on which sweeteners are okay and which ones aren't. If you haven't checked that out, check that out, Tina. Um, just got to tell you, love the posts and they make you laugh. Good, Jamie. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you're welcome for all the information. How much protein can you have before it turns into sugars? So Chad, pr protein does not turn into sugar. Never has, never will. Um, protein does not convert to sugar. That's a misnomer that a lot of people, um, some people actually attribute it to me and Jimmy Moore, but we never actually said that. Protein doesn't turn into sugar. Protein um, in excessive amounts in someone who's highly insulin resistant stimulates an insulin response, but it doesn't turn into sugar. So depending on what your uh, insulin load is and how insulin resistant you are, and depending on the type of protein that you're using, that um, can slow or stop weight loss if it's done excessively. So with my really heavy obese patients, I moderate their protein because I know that too much protein, especially arginine, tryptophan, isoleucine, leucine, those are the highest insulin responding proteins, can actually slow down weight loss if we give them too much uh, of those things. So, so that's where uh, large amounts of seafood and chicken, uh, which are very low fat, uh, in those patients um, slows their weight loss. Now, as a person loses weight and they become less and less insulin resistant, they can tolerate more and more and they actually need more and more levels of protein as they're building muscle and losing fat. But protein does not turn into sugar. So that's a misnomer that's still, I still hear in the, in the ketogenic world. 
Um, protein is a building block. Uh, your body's going to use it and, and try to conserve it where it can. But in order to use it, there is some release of the, in the, the 10 amino acids. The 10 essential amino acids, four of them actually have a fairly significant insulin response, but it is not releasing sugar. You actually do not see a blood sugar rise when you eat protein. You see an insulin rise, which actually may lower your blood sugar for a transient period of time. Then what may happen if your blood sugar drops too low, your, your liver may make more glycogen to keep the, the level somewhere between 70 and 100 on your blood sugar level, but there, there, there is no conversion of protein into sugar. That doesn't happen. You are welcome, Crystal. Let's see, I've seen it before. What's the supplement you recommend for PCOS and MTHFR single mutation? So, um, the Sarah, the, the supplement I recommend is um, uh, L-methylfolate. It's, it's basically methylated folic acid. Uh, that's the supplement that I use for MTHFR mutations. I did a whole video on this a couple of days ago. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash drnally, and that'll it'll tell you uh, where to find that. In fact, I'm going to plug that in here. Uh, just so people can see uh, that it's uh, YouTube, oops, youtube.com, DR Nally. Just so you can see this pop up here. That's where you're going to see, um, you can find that video there. You can hear my cat's meowing behind me here in the background because he's upset that I haven't fed him yet. Um, you can check that there. Now, the, the supplement that you may find, um, you can find at Keto Living. Dot com. I'll put this up here in, the, in this is where you can find the supplements, both my vitamin that has methylated folic acid in it, as well as berberine plus uh, is there. So it's called, uh, let me just plug that up there so you can see that berberine plus is what I recommend for the um, PCOS component. That's the, uh, the supplement that we that help stabilize blood sugar. It's been found to be equivalent to metformin. Uh, at the 500 milligram dose in regards to weight loss and stabilization of blood sugar. Um, and then the vitamin that ha already has the L-methylfolate in it, which we talked about before, is called Keto Essentials. You can find that at ketoliving.com uh, if you go there. Let me plug that up there. So that's the vitamin that I recommend that has the, the methylated folic acid in it. That's just a general multivitamin that I designed to be work to work with everything else. So hopefully that helps and it's clear, but thank you for asking the question. All right, let me see if I can find where I was at. Oh, wow, tons of questions rolling in here. Let me just see. I think I lost my place. Um, where did I let's see? Wow, I did lose my place. There she is. Okay, what's the purpose of exogenous ketones? Michelle, exogenous ketones um, were originally designed to help the Navy SEALs get into a ketogenic state so they wouldn't have seizures underwater when they were doing deep diving with the um, rebreather type uh, apparatus. Uh, in the early 90s, they, it was, they were designed as a, as a adjunct to keep the, about a third of people when they do scuba type diving, this the scuba without bubbles called rebreather, rebreathers, um, can have seizures. And so what was happening is we don't know which ones did, but the, what, the, what the Navy found, what divers found, is that when you are in a, a ketogenic state, you're less likely to have a seizure. Uh, and so they used them as originally for that. What we found is that the body works off of two fuel types. It works off, works off of glucose and or ketones. And the more, the more you shift from a glucose dependent metabolism into a ketone dependent metabolism, the decreased inflammation occurs, improvement in weight loss, improvement in focus, improvement in concentration, uh, decreased seizure uh, threshold or de decreased um, seizure likelihood, um, meaning it increases the threshold for seizures that you so you're, you're less likely to have them, if that makes sense. We use it for kids uh, that are resistant to epilepsy drugs. Um, but what we found is that that ketogenic state drives, um, is, is mimicking a fasting state. So the body is actually burning ketones. If you have trouble getting into that state, if you have uh, disease processes that respond really well to ketones, then you can use exogenous ketones to treat it. Um, uh, sometimes we use them as uh, uh, a lot of bodybuilders will use them or, or athletes will use them to give themselves uh, fuel provided for endurance type ex ex exercise and to enhance the contractile mu muscle of the sm small muscle and skeletal muscle to increase, increase the uh, force that occurs when that muscle contracts. So there's a whole slew of reasons that we use them for. Um, then, so that's something that, I mean, it really depends on what your goals are there. Hello from Quincy. How are you, Jenny? Let's see. I have been keto for a while, but have stalled. Can stress be a factor? Stress is a huge factor, Eric. Um, my suggestion for you, and I love the mask, by the way, in your image there. Um, the only way we can use, I actually did a video on stress. And stress can stress can cause weight gain or stress can be used to help with weight loss. The key is activating um, atrial natriuretic peptide 
and testosterone through exercise. So if you are feeling a lot of stress, you need to spend 20 to 60 minutes a day doing some form of physical activity that causes you to break a sweat. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, Weightlifting and resistance exercise is the most efficient, but any form of exercise works. And that actually helps reduce the so what happens is when you're stressed out, let's say a bear rears up in front of you in the woods, your body suddenly dumps a huge number of hormones into the bloodstream that allows you to either fight the bear or run from the bear. If you're, you're having multiple stresses, you know, that somebody calls you, bill collector calls or, or your spouse says something funny or your, your child gets, you know, in trouble at school, all of a sudden that's a bear. And if you, if you can't physically fight the bear or run from the bear, then those hormones, adrenaline, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, circulate in your bloodstream and cause increased tension, stimulate the liver to release increased amounts of glucose, which thereby raises the insulin and then causes you to gain or retain weight. If you don't burn through those hormones and blow through that excess um, stimulus of adrenaline, uh, you'll, you'll see weight gain. But if you are physically active every day, you are less likely to, uh, to cause weight gain and you're actually more likely to activate that for weight loss, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's clear. How to lower sex hormone binding globulin. Started boron, but just want to get your thoughts. Michelle, um, I don't I don't know of a, a lot of, li of the literature states you can use boron, but I've never seen anything great that way. Sex hormone binding globulin is actually related to stress, sleep, DHEA, uh, and testosterone. Um, it's also driven by insulin. So before you can truly affect sex hormone binding globulin, you have to make sure your insulin's balanced, your thyroid's balanced, make sure your testosterone and your DHEA are balanced. That then balances out sex hormone binding globulin. There's a couple other steps that can be made, but it really depends on your female hormones. And so just taking boron doesn't seem to be effective if those other pieces haven't been addressed. Um, hello, is it Deanne? Uh, from Shelly, Idaho, getting ready to read the, read the book. Oh, read the book. It's a great book. If you haven't checked out my book, let me uh, pull it out here. This is, this is, um, this is the keto cure. Check out the keto cure. Hopefully I can hold it still enough so you can see it. Um, I wrote this with Jimmy Moore and Maria Emmerich did 60 recipes, uh, with, for us. Oops, I'm set that there. So I'm not my camera over. Anyway, um, check it out. If you haven't read it, you can find it on Amazon or you can get a signed copy from me. If you go to docmuscles.com and click on the link to get my book, we'll send you a signed copy. Uh, any more information regarding the similarities with high altitude sickness? Um, I'm still waiting to see the final outcome on the uh, COVID-19 uh, studies that they're doing. Um, they're, that's they really haven't they haven't heard a whole lot other than they're in the process of looking at those studies. Um, it's kind of a holding pattern right now. It's Allison in Okinawa. I wanted to let you know my hubby and I talk about you all the time in our Jarhead Gingers Journey YouTube. Oh, thank you guys. That's awesome. I have to check that out. Uh, you are you are very welcome, guys, Th and thank you for sharing. And I miss Okinawa; it's a beautiful place. W which part of Okinawa are you in? Um, I, I spent uh, quite some time in Okinawa City and Itomon. Uh, let's see. Hey, Dr. Nelly, beautiful night here in Mississippi. Well, hello, Belinda. I hope Mississippi is well. My son is there in Mississippi. Uh, he and his uh, fiance uh, they're he, they're both going to school there. Do you recommend vitamin C or zinc to build up immune system for COVID? Um, I actually recommend zinc, about 10 to 30 milligrams daily. Um, uh, about 150 milligrams of, of vitamin C works well. And I also recommend um, melatonin at bedtime, about 5 to 10 milligrams. Hello from Chicago. Hello, Julia. How are you? Good to see you. Does intermittent fasting help with weight loss? <clears throat> that depends on what you're, how you're doing it. Chad, yes, it can help with weight loss. Uh, it depends on the dietary approach. That you remember, a ketogenic diet mimics fasting. And so if anything that's that's mimicking that, creating a rise in ketones and driving the body's need to use fat as the fuel instead of glucose, it helps with weight loss. Can I change a C-peptide test? Can you change it? I'm not sure what you mean by change it, Cindy. C-peptide is actually the precursor molecule that's cleaved off of insulin when it's first formed. So it, you can change C-peptide levels by changing your need for insulin. I don't know if that's what you're asking there. Uh, love the lives. Very encouraging. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it. What is my take on conspiracies? Oh, Ramon, I have lots of thoughts about conspiracies. Um, what's my take on them? Uh, it really depends. That's what it, it depends on the conspiracy. I love to watch a good conspiracy. It's always fun to listen to them. Uh, but the, the key is, um, uh, v validate them and verify them and verify them again. Uh, it depends on the conspiracy. <laughs> And the point is, if the person can't tell you it's a conspiracy or it's a theory, then you should probably not even listen. Um, that's the whole point. 
I was keto since January, carnivore since um, June, but I water fasted for Lent for 40 days on day five, eating my lower, on day five after eating, the lower body swelled. Um, Dana, that's usually because uh, more than likely, uh, the when you refed, you probably spiked the insulin up or took in a huge amount of salt. Um, that's actually very, it's probably related to the type of food you ate on the refeed. And I, without looking at journals, it's hard to answer any of that information. Um, but uh, I would have to look at your food journals and all that sort of stuff individually to, to be able to truly answer that. But usually what happens is after a fast or after people refeed, um, they're often adding too many carbs back in. And if they're still notably insulin resistant, it causes that swelling to rebound significantly. Or if they're hyponatremic, meaning they don't have salts, sodium, potassium, even magnesium, or zinc, that can also cause it too. Um, there's a whole slew of things that could be happening there. Hello, Angie. How are you? In Omaha, Nebraska. It's good to see you. Uh, I made your night. I've been drinking more straight up black coffee. The real thing. Aha. Okay. Do I... Do you recommend following macros? I hate macros. Um, no, let me explain. So rule number one, Dr. Nelly hates macros. Rule number two, Dr. Nelly despises macros. And rule number three, go back to rule number one. Um, macros cause more people to have struggles and problems than anything else. I, I, if, if the macros are designed for a 70 kilogram male, I have yet to meet a true 70 kilogram male uh, in the, my 20 years of medical practice. The problem is that a macro is designed based on an assumed caloric need, but our caloric need fluctuates every single day. And our bodies don't, there's no, there is no bone, uh, bomb calorimeter in our body. There's no calorie measurement system in the body. The body operates off of at least 40 hormones. And those hormones uh, stimulate hunger and they're, they're driven based on your stress level, how much you slept, what you had before, how much fat you have on your system, um, your genetics, uh, how insulin resistant you may be, uh, how much protein you had in the last three days. There's a whole slew of things that, that are, that drive hormone response. And so creating a macro, um, although a, it works as in, in, um, horseshoes and hand grenades, it doesn't work in obesity medicine. So what I tell people is cut the carbs down to 20 grams or less start there. That turns off the most powerful hormone, insulin, returns it to baseline. Number two, moderate the protein so you're giving yourself enough to maintain muscle and hair and skin growth. And then number three, use fat as your lever for hunger. Once you start losing weight, if you plateau, then we back the fat down and bring the protein up. Um, and we start to institute exercise or uh, where we can, or we mimic exercise sometimes with hormones uh, or medicines if a person can't exercise. Um, and so that's something to, to be aware of. I hope that kind of gives you a nutshell view but rule number one, I hate macros. Number two, I despise macros. Number three, go back to no rule number one. Um, let's see. I checked you out your berberine. I can't use it due to the chromium. I have IBS and stage three CKD. Um, Carla, Carla, I have multiple patients with IBS and CKD, and they do wonderfully well with chromium. The problem, the reason you have IBS, let me back up. Let me rephrase that. The reason most people have IBS and the reason most people have CKD is because their blood sugars are out of control. Chromium helps to stabilize blood sugar. I don't know why you would not want to use uh, chromium in that case. That that makes no sense to me whatsoever. If someone told you to avoid chromium, um, I then you may have some other disease issue that I'm unaware of, and that's an individual thing we have to discuss. But I, I have multiple patients with IBS and CKD who do phenomenally well with berberine uh, with chromium. So I don't, I'm not quite sure which, where you're going out there. Do you advocate the use of protein shakes? Only if you live on a desert island with no other animals. Um, I have a protein shake that I occasionally use. Um, if I'm traveling or something like that, or I just I just have to have protein, I can do that. Um, I know some guys who are in bodybuilding programs can use them to push the protein up in order to gain muscle mass. But I'm not a big, I find that people start becoming reliant on shakes and they're not eating real food and that makes it harder to, to lose weight. Do you advocate, oh, that was the, uh, do I advocate protein shakes when you're working out? I, I, I was trained to, but I don't anymore. Um, and I find that, that most people who are successful with the ketogenic lifestyle eat real food. Um, uh, Nally, sorry, oh, is the spelling? I think a lot of people put an E in there. My name is, it's spelled with an A. Don't, don't feel bad at all. No, no, not a big one, not a big deal. Some people call me, hey, you. Um, some people call me other things that I can't mention on the internet. So it's all right. Not worried. Sheila, how are you? Taking Flonase. 
and Brio for allergies seems to spike your sugar a bit. Um, unfortunately, the, the Flonase and the Brio are both steroids, and so they can seem to raise the blood sugar a little bit as well. So be cautious uh, with their, I mean, if they're causing you problems, you may want to talk to your doctor about how to address that. Hello, Marianne. It's good to see you. My husband is 6'2 and now wears size 30 waist pants. He doesn't really want to lose more weight. What do you do to suggest um, he doesn't lose more weight? Well, Jan, um, number one, he, the body will find its happy place um, in where it needs to maintain. A size 30 waist, People, I know people would kill for that. Um, he probably won't lose more, uh, but if he, if he does begin to lose more, he can raise his carb content up just a little bit. Um, uh, but my suggestion is to raise it just slightly by maybe by 20 to 30 grams per day, see how he does with that, or increase the protein. That'll also do it too. Um, thanks for getting on here and answering these questions. Well, no problem. I, I'm, I'm hoping that it gives people some insight because there's so much crap out there. Um, there's so much bad ketogenic advice and bad dietary advice out there that just is amazing. You love them. I have four cats in the house. Um, one dog that's in the house and five dogs that are outside. Uh, we have uh, six horses, four goats, at least 35 chickens, six ducks, and as many gophers as you can count. So it is a zoo here at my house. Um, my wife feeds animals and cleans up uh, dog and cat uh, messes everywhere. So, uh, but I love the cats and love the dogs. They're all great. Why do doctors prescribe extra folate when pregnant? Well, extra folate was shown, a lot of people who are folate deficient were shown to actually, it, when you're, well, let me back up. When you're folic acid deficient and you're pregnant, the very first thing that forms is the neural tube, which is basically the spinal cord in a, in a, in a fetus. That spinal cord has to form correctly, otherwise you have birth defects. And the lack of folic acid, we have shown the direct link to that. So that's why they, they give the folic acid. Now, we didn't know about MTHFR deficiencies until probably about three and a half years ago, maybe five years ago, um, and didn't realize about the supplementation with methylated folic acid and, until then either. So um, that's a really new thing that nobody really was aware of. And I think that it was just being recognized now in the OB, OB world. Um, but we've known for many years, at least 50 years, as far as I know, that folic acid itself leads to neural de defects if you're deficient in folic acid. If that makes sense. What kind of diet root beer is okay? Um, so if, if you're a soda drinker and you just cannot give up a soda, I, I bridge people between life and the ketogenic world, and I'm okay using uh, diet Dr. Pepper, diet the original Diet Coke, if you're in the United States, if you're outside of the United States, the original Diet Coke has a, a sweetener that's horrible called a sulfate and potassium. Um, diet Mug Root Beer or Diet NW Cream Soda. Those are the four diet sodas that I will allow people to use as we're transitioning them through the process. Um, yes, I know it has aspartame. And I'm sure you're going to write me a bunch of last nasty letters. And you know what? I don't care. Um, write them. That's fine. Um, I, I've, been, I've researched aspartame for the last 20 years. It's, we, we, we as obesity doctors can use it as a bridge for appetite suppression. Does it have some of its own side effects in regards to insulin resistance in the long term? Yes, it does. But if, um, but I'd rather you drink um, a diet Dr. Pepper than alcohol, to be honest. And so um, I may change my tune on that at some point in time. Um, I try to limit that if I can with people, but um, for what it's worth, I, I find it works well to bridge people. Let's see here. Are you in... Are you cutting your own hair in quarantine? Look sharp. No, my wife cuts my hair. Um, I, I, where did I lose that? Oh my gosh. I had so many messages pop up really fast. Let's see. Do I have any patients that successfully followed a ketogenic diet that have diverticulitis? Oh, absolutely. I have tons of them. Um, uh, I treat my own diverticulitis in the office unless it's active and they have to be hospitalized, then they're, they're hospitalized. But uh, that's, that is one thing that uh, I do. Uh, we do treat, and, and the, remember, diverticulitis is driven by an infection that arises with diverticulosis, and so uh, that's a whole other topic in and of itself, um, but what we find is that constipation is driven by high-carb diets. That's why we started giving people a bunch of fiber, but giving them a bunch of fiber doesn't always solve the problem, but if we just switch them back to a, a ketogenic diet, their, 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 uh, their bowel function returns to normal in most cases. Supplements may slow hirsutism. It seems to be increasing in a few... So hirsutism, Marcia, the hair loss, for those that don't know what hirsutism is, um, is driven by um, poor thyroid function, uh, lack of pregnenolone, low progesterone, or not enough protein in the diet. Those are the four most common things I see on a ketogenic diet. So if you start doing keto and you're losing your hair, those are the four areas I look at first. Um, very important to find those. I just totally lost my place. So and got out of got out of sync with questions here, guys. So let me 
see if I can find where. Um, will grade will exogenous ketones help with grade four glioblastoma? We've shown that ketogenic states help with glial. There's there's a number of articles that talk about ketogenic states um, with glioblastoma. Now, is there any article on exogenous ketone supplementation in that? I have not. I know that we're doing some re look, looking at one, but I don't have an answer. I would have to look back and see if there's an article. I, I want to say there was one, but I cannot remember out of hand, Linda. But the issue is that if you're pushing a person into a ketogenic state, um, we know that glioblastoma doesn't grow well in the presence of ketones without any glucose. So that, that we do know. Um, I lost 65 pounds in August doing carnivore, nine inches off stomachs, carried my weight in my stomach. So the rest of the stomach fat, Audra, is often related to estrogen dominance. So have your doctor check your um, female hormones. That's that's where I find that when people lose and then plateau out with abdominal belly fat, it's because they're probably estrogen dominant and need to have their, their female hormones, progesterone and estrogen balanced. Um, any recommendations for someone who on a ketogenic diet that has diet? Oh, I, okay. That was the diverticulosis question. Got that. Let's see. CBD oil works for inflammation or sleep. Um, you know, CBD oil is, has anti-inflammatory properties and some anti-pain properties. Um, does it help with inflammation to some degree? But I don't, I don't see it uniformly work with everybody. Um, I don't prescribe it. I have patients that come in using it and I have some that claim it was wonderful and I have others that claim they had no help whatsoever. So, uh, I have not, I have not delved into it. It's slightly stronger than ibuprofen, uh, in regards to its anti-inflammatory properties. Um, but it's outlandishly expensive. So if you are independently wealthy and, um, own your own oil rig or your own CBD oil company, then great, more power to you. Uh, I just don't recommend THC. How long will it take to heal a thyroid? Maria, that depends on what your definition of heal is. Um, within about six months, most people on a ketogenic diet have notable improvement in their thyroid function. If it's got something wrong with it in regards to healing, that's a whole different story. So that depends on what we're talking about. Share, I started your book so far, very informative. Better critique when finished. Oh, thanks, Robin. Um, really don't want to die at 66. I don't, well, none of us want to die at 66. Uh, Maria Emmerich wrote the recipe, so thank her. She did a phenomenal job there. Um, I think she wrote some of the best recipes, recipes she's ever done. Uh, you are very welcome. I will have, will I have a problem losing weight if my testosterone is too low? Yes, you will, Angela. That is often an issue with women that I find if the testosterone is not where it should be. Are the hormone testing kits worth buying at the drugstore? No, they're not. Um, I don't waste your money on them. Lots of good info tonight. Didn't know. Uh, I've been on keto three years. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You know, sometimes I just do these questions. And that's why a lot of people get mad at me because I do question and answer after a little blurb. Um, but I find that a lot of people just need that one little answer. And um, if I can give you that one little answer that helps, great. I'm happy. Claire, hello in Montreal. How is Canada? Uh, is it cold up there right now? We live in, in uh, Yomitan, Okinawa. Oh, that's awesome. We're moving back to the United States this fall, traveling full-time in RV. How cool is that? So Yomitan. Is, oh, you're up by the – is that up by the um, – is Yomitan up by the um, naval base? I think – I, 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 I think that's up north on the north side of Okinawa. I think – let me know. Can you take melatonin – can you take melatonin with lisinopril? Uh, really, you shouldn't use melatonin with the blood pressure medicines. There can be a subtle effect on blood pressure medicine, yes. So watch your blood pressure. If you take the two together, it can, melatonin can change the absorption of uh, lisinopril and deltaism. So if you're I have patients take melatonin at night. Um, so if you're taking your blood pressure medicines at night, you may want to look at adjusting that. So you're, you're they're about two hours apart at least in that regard. Hi, Dr. Nally. Let's see. Malaysia is watching. Ah, how cool. Hey, that is awesome. Welcome in Malaysia. I hate macros too. <laughs> We're already back to the macros. Okay, well, there's a lot of questions. Hello, Crystal. It's good to see you. Oh, you know what? Did these go backwards? And maybe it reversed. Um, it may have reversed. Never done. Oh, never done macros. Oh, okay, you know, you know, let's see. Hello from Perth. Hey, Leah, how are you? How can I rewind this video? My live feed was interrupted after I posted my directory goes question. So this video is current. If you're watching right now, um, Monday evening, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, I am live right now, um, or 8, 10 p.m. Uh, if it's if if it doesn't say live up in the corner, then go back to youtube.com and I'll I'll post it there. Uh, it'll be on Facebook for a period of time, then it'll it'll expire, and then this will roll over to YouTube. Uh, so youtube.com forward slash DR now and you can watch it forward and backward. It takes about an hour for me to upload them. So, uh, but, but you can watch it there. It will be able to, once the live is done, I think you can rewind it uh, after the live is over. 
on Facebook before it expires. How long on average will? I don't know, Maria. Uh, how long will it do what? I love that you hate macros. <laughs> when the live is over, it will be okay. Thanks for Marsha for helping me answer those questions for her. The only thing I could count is carbs. <clears throat> That's, you know, to be honest, counting, I, 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 if it's not easy, I'm not going to do it myself. And, and counting carbs is fairly easy. Uh, does endovascular damage eventually heal? Yes, it can. Vicky, it actually can. I've seen it. I've seen it in heal um, multiple times. I started to run, started keto way of eating. I'm struggling in my runs. Um, it may take about two months, uh, Sharon, to see yourself keto adapt. Ensure that you're taking in enough salt because if you're if you're running and you're not replacing the salt, if I when I'm on my exercise days, I need um, at least three to four teaspoons of pink salt, the uh, Redmond salt or the pink Himalayan salt. Um, I had a bottle of Redmond salt somewhere, and I think I lost it. Uh, Redmond real salt. Uh, there's a link on my website. There's a link on the bottom of the YouTube if you're watching this on the replay. Uh, in the in the uh, if it says on YouTube on the replay the, in the uh, uh, information bar, there's a link to Redmond salt or or pink Himalayan salt. I prefer the Redmond salt because the manganese level is slightly higher and it tastes better. Uh, but make sure you're getting adequate salt. Number one, number two, drink enough water. Number three, um, you may need a dramatically more higher level of protein than you think you do. Uh, get getting back to keto for second round. What's my percent fat? What is my percent of fat protein? And I know it's 20 grams of carbs. So. Chad, I, what I tell people is 20 grams of carbs. Um, number, number two, you, uh, it's roughly 30% protein, 70% fat. Um, that is essentially a one-to-one -one ratio by grams. So what, it's much easier to calculate grams. So I tell people um, for every gram of protein, you need a gram of fat. If you want the calculation on how much protein you need uh, after you've lowered your carbs to 20 grams, go to my website. There's a, you can download a copy of the, the, my diet um, on my website at darkmuscles.com. That'll give you the full seven-page dietary handout, the protein calculations and all that sort of stuff. It gives you information there on, on all that. Um, but it's roughly about a 30% protein, 70% fat, roughly. I say that because if you take a, an egg, an egg is seven grams of protein and seven grams of fat. They're one-to-one. -one. If you cal calculate the calories off of that, that turns out to be about 30% of the calories in that egg are from protein and 70% of the calories are from fat. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. That's a perfect ketogenic ratio. Red meat is that way. Bacon is that way. Eggs are that way. Pork is that way. Those are the, the so I tell people start with those foods. If you're eating those real foods without slathering them in additional fat, then you're hitting a ketogenic diet perfectly. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you haven't followed my uh, my broadcast, oops, click on the Facebook link to follow me over here and get notified when I go live on Facebook. Um, if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, click down right there and subscribe to me, and you can it'll pop these will pop up one night when I. Uh, uh, go, uh, when, they, when they're post posted on YouTube, uh, go to my website, darkmuscles.com. Uh, follow me on the blog there um, and uh, check out the information. I have a bunch of freebie stuff there as well. Berberine may have, berberine may have stomach cramps and heavy bloating. Then Marianne, um, you did not eat enough food with it. Um, if you take berberine on an empty stomach, I guarantee it will give you stomach cramps or bloating. So you need to take it with a meal. If you take it separate from a meal, that is a side effect identical to metformin. So be aware of that. Um, or the meal was not big enough and you need to use a, a bigger meal with that, with that berberine. Darn, I'm late. Oh, you're not that late, Sheena. <clears throat> you can always watch the replay. Eat real food. Yes, Nina. That's the key. I what? Sorry, I wasn't clear. I've been keto, low carb for two and a half years. I had, I've cut my insulin way down, lost 80 pounds, had a C peptide. It was 0.8. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, it's well, the, in a ketogenic state, that is, but endo doesn't care for keto, uh, but can't deny you're any better. Weight loss is extremely slow. So remember, a, a 0.8 C peptide means that at the time you only needed a small amount of insulin, and which is consistent with a ketogenic diet. Um, weight loss is extremely slow and doesn't approve of me still trying to lower the insulin more. Um, trying to learn how to, how to change this with diabetes. Uh, so that's so, Cindy, each of my diabetics who are, uh, if you're, and I, I'm assuming, are you insulin dependent? Uh, if that's the case, then we, we work with those, with those patients closely on weaning those, the insulin levels down. Uh, that's something you want to work closely with a doctor that knows how to do it or your endocrinologist. Um, but a C peptide of 0.8 means that um, you're, you are producing some insulin. Uh, the question is whether you're having to use additional exogenous insulin to treat it. And that's a whole individual topic. Uh, but I can tell you that most of my type one diabetics who use insulin, um, cut their insulin needs to a third of what it normally is, and they dramatically improve. Now, if you've stalled out, there can be a whole slew of reasons for that. And so go to my either blog or go to my website, 
uh, on the, go to the blog on my website darkmuscles.com or go to YouTube and check out the uh, video that I've done I've done on stalls and start there I look at that those sections good to see you Bob um, this is becoming a habit yes it is uh, I'm 82 and have been on keto for over a year health seems great question my fingernails have become rigid so that fingernail rigidity um, is either due to thyroid deficiency or a B vitamin issue or a biotin issue. Uh, those are the three first three things I'd check out with your doc. My CKD was caused by sepsis. I've been on keto five years. A1C is five. IBS was 24-7. Now maybe once in a month. Oh, that's dramatic. That's, that's wonderful, Carla. You're doing fantastic. Um, you are awesome. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. You don't like macros, but say count your protein and fat. So, Denise, I don't like to use a macro because a macro doesn't work for people's weight. Um, you, we calculate your protein need based off your height, not your weight. So, so if you use a height calculation, it basically calculates protein need for ideal body weight at that height. Um, it's not, a, we're not calculating a weights per se. We're, we're using a number to based on your height that gives us an average need for protein. That's all we're doing. Um, the issue is we just need to determine that once we've lowered the carbs less than 20 grams, how much protein do you need so you don't lose hair and you don't lose muscle and you don't lose uh, skin tone and complexion or your periods don't stop if you're a female who's menstruating. You need to know how much protein you need. Uh, for, for the average male who's six foot, uh, who's not exercising, that protein you use somewhere around um, 75 to 85 grams of protein. If, if you're exercising, that may be up to 90 to 100 grams of protein per day. Um, females, it, depending on how tall they are and where they're at, that can be anywhere from 50 grams a day up to 100 grams per day, depending on what their levels are. So based on your height and your exercise levels, we calculate a need for protein. Once we know what that protein need is, then you basically just determine, okay, like for me, I need roughly 95 to 105 grams of protein per day. So I calculate up, okay, how many how many grams of protein is in a hamburger patty? Well, one hamburger patty is about 15 grams of protein. Or if I have a 12 ounce ribeye, that's about 40 grams of protein. So I know if I have that one piece of meat with my meal, that's a third or fourth of, uh, of my protein for the day or a third or half of my protein for the day. And so that gives me an idea. I don't have to worry about fat because I'm eating red meat, pork, eggs, or bacon. I already know that if I eat that piece of red meat or eat that egg, they're already that the good Lord already pre-calculated the, the fat grams for you. He put them in there and it's, it's set. So, so I don't worry about uh, calculating macros uh, because that changes based on every little moment of change with your um, caloric need. And nobody knows what their caloric need is today. I guarantee you, you cannot ballpark accurately your caloric need for the day. Um, unless you actually stood in a VO2 hood and didn't and had every single bit of your food measured and weighed. And nobody does that. Well, a few people do that, but not if you live their life. Got it. My kids are two, 20, 20 twins. You had 20 twins, Maria? Um, I'm not sure what that means. That's painful. That sounds actually quite painful. And harrowing to raise them. 20 twins. That's 40 children. Oh, wow. I hope you had a big home. Uh, difference in eating duck eggs versus chicken eggs. So duck eggs um, are notably higher in omega-3 fatty acids, and they actually taste better with baking. So we have they're a little more gamey, but uh, they're wonderfully healthy. And so uh, we have free-range ducks that, that lay eggs, and we use them to bake. I'll actually will often use I'll do one duck egg with two or three eggs with my breakfast. That's actually lovely. Um, mine are also rigid. So check so for rigid nails, check your thyroid, check your B vitamins biotin level, which is a B vitamin, and um, um, it's often thyroid, but those are the, those are the I'm forgetting one, it just slipped my mind. It'll come to me. Um, Zevia. Zevia should be okay. No problem with Zevia. I'm not too worried about Zevia. Uh, I'm 147 pounds, 30, 63. My hips to waist ratio is still puts me in the morbidly obese. Um, I'm size 8 skirt. The waist seems to be stuck at 38. Uh, Liz, it's probably estrogen dominance or lack of female hormones. Those are the, uh, I wrote a whole article on my blog about estrogen dominance or uh, uh, lack of estrogen. So you need to have your doc check out your female hormones. Um, I, I'm a proponent of a bioidentical hormone treatment if those are off. And so that's what I would recommend considering if a person had um, abnormal hormone function in my office so if they came to me as a patient. 
As a type 2 diabetic, should I take insulin only at meals or when my CGM shows that my numbers are rising? So you're type 2, but you're on insulin, Stacy. Am I understanding that correctly? Um, I'm on high steroids due to chronic leukemia and my control is shot. Oh, okay. So that's a whole different ball game. We're treating uh, cancer and st with steroids. Um, I would probably use a rapid acting insulin to control the high spikes, but still you can control the sugars with diet as much as possible and then use insulin to treat the, the spikes is usually what I would do with, with patients. Talk, work closely with your doctor because there may be some pros and cons to how that's working and look to see whether the steroids can be weaned down sooner than later because um, that's going to play a big role there. But we want to treat the cancer first. That's the most important. And then control the cancer growth of the ketogenic diet is where we would want to consider going if you were my patient. Uh, Zevia is a great alternative for some. Yes, I agree with that. Soda was the first thing I gave up. Good for you, Eric. The best thing you can do. Um, I can. I had a headache on my left side for a week. Um, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Sandra. Uh, let's see. Wearing a face mask gives me a sore throat. Why could this be? Uh, probably because you're not used to it. Uh, and you may be mouth breathing more than you realize because it's covering your nose in a way that it's occluding the nose. Me too. I don't know what that means, uh, Marsha. Um, let's see. Testosterone is low. Yes, absolutely. That will inhibit you from losing weight. I love these question and answer nights. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that, Vicki. Um, how can I bump up the testosterone? Zinc is the first step, Angela. Second step is avoid things that drive elevated estrogen and avoid things that raise your insulin. Um, insulin is the first. If you eat a piece of bread and you produce five times the insulin response to that bread, it will suppress your testosterone. Higher insulin suppresses testosterone. I hear lots of advertisements for nutritional IV therapy, especially the Myers cocktail hype or help. Um, Sue, I am a... My, my gut feeling at this point is, is it's a lot of hype. Um, most of the stuff that's quoted with this IV therapy um, is anecdotal. Um, I realize there's a few studies on some things that show some, but they're all very small, like five people or 20 people. Um, so it's hard to really gauge whether um, it's helpful or not. I, I, if, I personally don't recommend them. Um, thank you, I called, but you're booking into October. Uh, yes, I probably am, Dana. Good for you, but bad for me. Oh, shoot. Well, see if you can find somebody near, nearby that can help you out. Mitzi, hello, Mitzi. How are you? Um, what causes uh, kidney stones? High insulin does, Ed. Um, I actually she wrote a whole chapter on kidney stones in my book. Grab this book and read it. Read the chapter on kidney stones. 63 ways to hip ratio says I'm still morbidly obese. Um, oh, I think I answered that question already. I have three torn muscles on my rotator and ruptured bicep. If I go back on keto, uh, can I dodge surgery? Probably not, Chad. If you tore the muscles, keto will not fix a torn muscle. Uh, only surgery does that. My protein need comes out to 70 grams per day. Should I split that up throughout the day or is it okay to have it once a day? Tim, it's okay to do it once a day if you want to do it once a day, but actually we found that weight loss occurs best with two meals a day, not one a day. You'll see some weight loss, but it's more effective uh, if it's really two meals a day. So if you're like, you're fasting for 12 to 16 hours and then you're splitting that up into two meals, um, there's some data that, that points to that. No, my kids are 20. Oh, they're 20 year old kids. You didn't have 20 twins. All right, fantastic. <laughs> um, oh, it makes sense about what I said about folic acid. I, I get that, okay. Estrogen dominant post menopausal. Yes, check. Well, you can be estrogen dominant. You can be estrogen dominant in, in menopause post-menopause and you can be, you can actually be estrogen dominant in, in, uh, in any state, uh, even post-menopausal. Yes, you can be. Um, and I give reasons for that in that article. So check that out. How do you take bioidentical hormones? Um, you can take them as a cream, as a an oral pill, as a shot, or as a pellet. Uh, hello, Dr. Nally. I carry the MTHFR gene. I take your vitamins. Should I take one once a day or should I split them to twice a day? If you can handle all six vitamins in one period, good for you. Uh, the B vitamins make my stomach too, too upset, so I have to split them up to breakfast and lunch. Uh, hopefully that answers that, Cheryl. I tore, my, I tore mine. It took seven years healing on its own. It was painful. I'm not sure what you tore, Sheena. I'm assuming is that rotator cuff. don't know what, what you're referring to there. All right, you guys. Oh, looks like there's another question that popped up. Uh, Awesome. 
Well, it's been 50 minutes. And for those of you that are still sticking with me at 50 minutes, more power to you. Thank you. I appreciate you that. Uh, if you like this, share it out. It, um, if you haven't followed me or subscribed, follow me or subscribe, depending on which social media platform you're, you're on here. I will roll this over to a YouTube uh, channel in probably about an hour or so uh, once it uploads and processes through the processing. Um, all the little uh, YouTube uh, um, gremlins come out and process it, I guess, I assume. Um, who knows what happens on, on YouTube processing. Uh, anyway, that's the story. Thank you, YouTube, for posting my videos, by the way, though. Anyway, anyway <laughs> not that they're going to be watching me, although they might be. That's the conspiracy part. Uh, where's, where's, what's, where's, um, oh, I just forgot his, forgot his name. That asked me about conspiracies. Anyway, he probably signed off. Anyway, thank you to watch later. All right, you guys, have a great evening. I am going to um, sign off and go finish my charts and uh, uh, try to finish up for the evening. Thanks for all your great questions. Uh, we really literally in 50 minutes of questions. That's impressive. Uh, all right, have a good evening. Remember, keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, pass the bacon, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night, guys. Take good care.